Good evening. Maya Angelou said these words in her poem, Still I Rise. Out of the huts of history shame I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind the nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. June 17, 2015 redefined my entire life. From that day to this day, it became almost a paradigm shift that continued to remind me that the axis of evil can never overpower the power of love. When we began looking at the aftermath of the events of Charleston in June of 2015, we learned that hate overpowered love. Clemente Carlos Pinckney was my closest friend. We were friends from our early childhood days up until the time that he was brutally murdered along with the other eight in Mother Emanuel AME Church. That iconic beacon where I received two ordinations in the African Methodist Episcopal Church in that very same church. Every time I enter its now historic doors, I continue to hold my breath, remembering the tragedy and the events that occurred in June 2015. When we began looking at solutions, as to how we can begin to redefine those events to begin focusing on substantive conversations that begin to move us toward conciliation, reconciliation, and a more uh, clear understanding of the systemic ills, injustices, evils that begin to separate us, particularly as it relates to race in Charleston, South Carolina, in South Carolina, and in this nation. I'm a product of Charleston. I grew up in Charleston. I remember the days when we could not uh, enter or integrate certain institutions because of the color of one's skin. I always challenged those notions, particularly graduating from Burke High School and then deciding that I'm not going to a historically black college, but I'm going to the College of Charleston. That was a tough decision, but it was a decision that began to be, change my life in the sense that race work became my life's work, trying to reconcile people to people, recognizing the commonality becomes our humanity. And so, after June 2015, after fighting in issues of race, equity, fairness, and justice for nearly 30 years, my entire worldview shifted, realizing that our fight must be undergirded in love. Maya Angelou's poem continues to reign true in my consciousness, that there must be hope, that we can be better as a result of any horrific tragedy life begins to hurl our way. So I decided, based on the Bible study that Pinckney and others were sharing that particular night, talking about the parable of the sower, when looking at how I could begin to affect race relations in Charleston, recognizing that the institution of the church, faith organizations, from Friday to Sunday, synagogues, mosques, and churches are the most segregated places in our cities, in our state, in our world on those particular days. So I decided to make Glebe Street a vineyard 
whereby we would be able to intersect with others who could begin to help us understand how we could bring down the barriers of hate and begin building bridges that begin to unite us together as people in Charleston. I looked across the wall of my church and decided that we would start with Grace Church, Grace Church Cathedral a place where I could only dream of having access to when I was growing up as a student at Memminger Elementary School in the 70s. And so we started a Bible, uh, a weekly um, book study group whereby we are able to engage in substantive, critical conversations steeped in race, looking at uh, the intersection between hatred and love and deciding how histories intersect that sometimes do not necessarily create the same memories in the mindsets of those who live the very same experiences. It becomes an intentional, consistent, weekly commitment. Studying books like James Cone's The Cross and the Lynching Tree, Will Willimon's Who Lynched Willie Earle? in order to peel back the layers of the issues that begin to divide and separate us as Charlestonians. We are our best hope. We can begin to redefine how we move forward. I have hope in the sense that I used to be one of those cynics believing that we could never achieve any of the things that we have achieved in these last two years not necessarily looking at the flag coming down as a banner of success, but looking at the conversations that could never even get up off the ground that are happening today. As a result of our individual passion and, and, and fervor around this issue, we are gathered tonight in, in this historic music hall trying to at least grapple with how we can engage a conversation on race. My very dear friend was taken away in June of 2015. But right on Glebe Street, I gained a new friend in the person of Paul Roof, Karen Roof, his wife, who works at the College of Charleston. Paul is probably in the room somewhere tonight. He's my personal guest. Paul is Dylan Roof's uncle. And when we begin looking at how we are affected so personally, we could begin really challenging our own ideological worldviews by determining how far we are willing to go with having conversations with those who hurt just like we hurt on the different end of the pendulum. And so by having those critical, courageous conversations, we found that we had more in common than we had that separated us. And so tonight, this particular historic conversation on race begins to set the groundwork for what we can do in our own individual vineyards, on your street, in your home, in your family, in your church, in your women's group, in your political party, in your individual spheres of influence you can begin to have those conversations that causes individuals who would begin to shut down potential for similarities to begin to, begin to recognize that we are all God's children. And in Charleston, we can become a shining light as to how tragedy can turn into triumph. Thank you. <laughs> 